As the verbal combat intensified between Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi over his walking out of a meeting, the president asked his top aides to back up his account of the meeting, including Counselor Kellyanne Conway, Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley, who explained he wasn't there but had attended another meeting with the Democrats. Very calm, no temper tantrum. Very calm. I've seen both, and this was definitely not uh, <laughs> angry or ranting. And that accusation that you pounded your fist, and I'll be honest, you have every right to do that. We face a crisis on our southern border, and they've done nothing. Uh, they have not worked with you. All they've done is mocked and derided you. I sat down with the Deputy White House Press Secretary here in Washington. Hogan Gidley, welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. The president the other day asked you and Sarah Sanders and Kellyanne to vouch for the fact that he didn't throw a temper tantrum in that meeting with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. You said you weren't at that meeting, but you spoke about another meeting. There's been all kinds of media mockery of this. MSNBC was leading with it every hour. Was it awkward for all of the advisors to have to vouch for the boss? Absolutely not. I mean, especially when you're in the uh, face of 92 percent negative news coverage against you, we have to vouch for him all the time. It's amazing how the media covers uh, what he does and what he says in a slant that makes everything negative, no matter how positive the subject matter may be. And you're saying uh, everybody does that? Uh, Many journalists do that? I'd, I'd say a majority of journalists. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And when he leaves a meeting with Nancy Pelosi and all they do is mischaracterize his demeanor and take whatever she says, you know, lock, stock and barrel. I mean, it would be so nice if we had a complicit, compliant media the way the Democrats do. And we don't. But that's the game. And we understand that. That's why the president takes everything directly to the American people so often via Twitter and other instances. And speaking of Twitter and speaking of the meeting, here's what the president tweeted. I was extremely calm yesterday, my meeting with uh, Pelosi and Schumer, knowing they would say I was raging, which they always do, along with their partner, the fake news media. Well, so many stories about the meeting use the rage narrative anyway, fake and corrupt press. Now, there was a New York Times headline that said Trump stormed out of the meeting, but didn't every story, every story that I saw, gave both sides. Trump said he wasn't. They said he was. Uh, so how is that fake and corrupt press? Well, because of the language they use and they say things like he was enraged or he stormed out. Those are editorialized words. You can say he left the meeting. You can say he well, walked out of the he meeting. He left abruptly. That's well, fair. Well, that's well, again, define abruptly. He gave his Three message. And, well, he yeah. gave his message and, and, and left the meeting. There was no time limit set beforehand that everyone agreed upon. We're going to do 20 minutes. And then he left at three. He walked in and gave a statement to Nancy Pelosi, who just minutes before had accused him of engaging in a cover up, engaging in a crime with no proof and no evidence. And quite frankly, that's like Russia collusion witch hunt hoax 2.0. They did this for two years where they accused him of colluding with a foreign power with no proof and no evidence. And now they're saying he's in a cover up with no proof and no evidence. And not one media member, not one, has asked Nancy Pelosi two questions. One, what proof do you have for any of this? Where's the evidence? And second of all, if you have all of this proof and you have all of this evidence, why do you need all these investigations? Just show us the proof and evidence and we'll get it done today. There certainly are a lot of battles uh, over subpoenas and testimony and records. But here, in when the president came out, he said he can't negotiate about infrastructure or anything else with Schumer, with Pelosi, while the House is investigating him. Um, the press says he's stonewalling, which is a sort of a Watergate Again, term. Well, yeah, okay. but regardless, as well. regardless, Hogan, aren't many Americans going to look at this whole spectacle and look at it as a, an endless high school squabble, and meanwhile, they will believe that nothing's going to get done here in Washington for the next year and a half? Well, look, I, I think the, the American people are right to believe nothing gets done in Washington, D.C., so much because of what we see with gridlock between uh, these polarized camps. What the president did was came in and said, listen, I, I don't care about the, the, the swamp mentality. I'm a different kind of person. I'm a businessman. I like to get things done. He's had record setting accomplishments and record setting Okay, but time. after two and a half years, uh, isn't he at least partially to blame for the gridlock? Because it takes two sides to not agree uh, to go forward on legislation. Listen, the entire press corps, with no proof and no evidence, the entire Democrat Party, called him a liar, called him uh, 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 corrupt, accused him of treason, a crime punishable by death for two years with zero proof and zero evidence. Anybody listening to our show today, listening to us speak, would be furious 
if they were accused of a crime for two years, and then once it was proven to be they didn't commit that crime, go, oh, well, it's fine. I can work just fine. I with understand people. that. And the president now uses the word treason about some of his detractors or people he uh, is unhappy with in the FBI. But let me move on to the economy. The economy is just on fire. Sure. Lowest jobless rate in half a century. Uh, stock market has done very well. And for a while, I think it was downplay. But can we really say now that the president, uh, that the economy and the gains under this president are not being adequately covered by the media? Uh, it's one of the most uh, undertold stories of this administration, as the great Larry Kudlow would say. Uh, think about where we were and where we are. I mean, African-American wages are up 9 percent. Uh, unemployment amongst African-Americans, Asian-Americans, Hispanic-Americans. Women are now employed at record numbers as well. I will I grant mean, you all that. Yeah, absolutely. But the media won't cover that in a positive manner. It, it, they, either, they either talk about it being part of Obama's economy or they just ignore it altogether. And that's why you see so often the president say things like, you know, if you guys covered the economy, I'd have a better approval rating. The president said this New York Times report was fake news uh, a week or so ago that acting Pentagon chief Patrick Shanahan uh, had provided a contingency report about the possibility of sending 120,000 troops to the Middle East if Iran did certain things like attack American troops. Um, since then, uh, U.S. officials have confirmed that there is a, another contingency plan up to 10,000 troops. And the president said Friday he's sending about 1,500 soldiers to the Middle East. So it wasn't fake news, as he accused the New York Times. Uh, but you're talking about specifics and details. Only he and the people in that room know what actually was talked about as it relates to a plan to move forward. So many leaks come out of this uh, uh, out of this building and, and throughout this town that just simply aren't true. And the president was calling it out for what it was. Why does President Trump keep shining a spotlight on Joe Biden with constant criticism when, according to the media, uh, many of his own advisors think he's just elevating the former vice president by making it seem like He's got it. This Democratic race wrapped up. First of all, the president has known Vice President Joe Biden for quite some time. But to pretend as though the, the President Trump is elevating Joe Biden, he was the Vice President of the United States. He's now running for but president. But he's one of 23 he, Democrats running right, for president. Right. But, but let's be clear every metric shows Vice President Biden had a much higher name ID than anybody else. And so the president's going to come out and counterpunch when people attack him. And, and that's what he's going to do regardless of whether you're running for president or whether you're sitting in Congress right now. Hogan Gidley, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.